Well, as Brian said, you know, it's, uh, it's truly exciting to be starting this season. And, uh, you know, a lot of work goes into preparing for a season. And I've appreciated how our, how our guys have approached, you know, every, every phase of it. And, uh, and now this is, you get to play the games. And, you know, the, the schedule, you know, there's, there's 12 games on the schedule. And as a team, you, you hope to earn the right to play more. But as we all know, you know, for a player, uh, and you don't know how many. And so you just, you're excited for them to get the opportunity to play. And um, certainly been a lot of players that have earned the right to play. And I think that's what it comes down to. You know, who's going to play? The, those that have earned the right to play and credit to to the players and, and to the coaches that have gotten a number of guys into that position where not only can they play, but I feel like they can help us. And uh, we get to do that this week against Illinois State. And uh, you watch Illinois State and and you see a really good football team, well coached and, you know, know a lot of those coaches and, and respect uh, a lot of those coaches and, and uh, but it's, you know, I believe every time you play this game, it's, it's kind of the main focus is making sure you're ready for it, you know, and, and our team is ready for it. And, and that's what's great about each week. You get the week of preparation and I like the way it started today and, and need to have a good week of preparation. Well, there's a couple of reports out. There's a couple of reports out that Chase suffered an injury in practice. I know you don't like talking about injuries, but can you address that if that's what his status is? Yeah, no, Chase did, and um, you know it's one of those that uh, don't quite know, kind of for how long, you know exactly. But but he did uh, last week um, suffer that, and and uh, you know again you you feel. Terrible for him because I, I really liked what he was doing in camp, and and yet the one thing I know that Chase will, uh, he will stay in it, you know, and when he can get back, he'll uh, he'll be ready to go. But uh, that that is accurate. Kind of a follow up then, obviously with with Chase unavailable for an extended period of time, can you assess what you know about Deacon and Miles right now? Since obviously Deacon ran the scout team, I'm guessing last year, and Miles. Right. You know, enrolled early, but where, where are those two guys standing, and how you have to get them up to speed now for as yeah, long as it yeah. Takes? I mean, there's you know, you're talking about you got three quarterbacks left, right? You, you talked about Deacon and Miles and and Marshall, right? Those are the three, and and uh, you know, they, they've all got to get some work because they're in that stage where they got to keep developing, you know, and so um, it's always a little bit more difficult at this point, but there's enough opportunities for us, and 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 that's what we've got to we've got to do, you know, couldn't sit here right now and tell you who, who's further ahead or not. You, you know, Deacon certainly has had more overall reps and, and Miles, um, you know, had the spring and, and, and what he got in camp and even camp's hard because, you know, you're, you're focused on getting ready and, and yet, you know, I think all, all of them have done a good job of, of kind of the, the preparing mental side of it and, and now, you know, going to get some more reps. Well, obviously, you're going into your first game with the new coaching situation with the special teams not having a specific coordinator. Mm -hmm. How do you think that went throughout the fall, the, seeing the rest of your assistants kind of step up into those different roles? And where do you want that unit to improve over from last year? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, first part of it is, you know, I've appreciated, you know, what they've done. And, and you know, regardless, you know, the special teams, I think what's what's fun about those units is it it takes everyone. You know, there there's – you know, offensive players, defensive players. There's guys that are uh, starters, and then there's guys that that is probably the way they're going to contribute on the team, right? So it's got every piece of it from the players' component, and the, and the same to be said. You know, whether it's every year I've been in coaching, I mean, you've got a ton of coaches helping. You know, and and it, you know, certainly you've got a guy that's going to kind of help organize it, but you've got everyone really aside from you, you know your Coach Bo, you know, is involved on the field goal, you know, protection, extra point protection, and, and Ross on the 
field goal block. You know, other than that, you got every coach in, in the, you know, everyone else helps out on it, right? And it's it's truly, you know, everyone's on deck. You know, that's the one phase or, or part of the team where we all jump in and, and let's go. And, you know, what you want to be is you want to be uh, another phase that, that contributes to us being the best team we can be. Chase, if you can confirm whether it's a knee, if there are reports it's a knee, I'm just trying to confirm that that's the case. And also, what did you see in Riley, this training camp, for him to win the job there at right tackle as a young guy? Yeah, I mean, uh, Riley's done a nice job. I thought he had a really good spring, and he's just continuing to work and, and improve with it. He's, uh, you know, extremely coachable. You see, you see a coaching point being made, and you see him correcting it. And... Um, you know, I think like any any young player, you know, the, the more you do things, the more comfortable you get. I think that builds confidence. I know guys around him are, are confident, and and so uh, that's been that's been fun to see his growth, and and you know, he needs to continue to grow. There's every every guy on this team needs to, you know, you appreciate what they've done to this point, but we we all got to find ways to keep improving. Paul, the inside backs room, uh, looking at Muma as one of the starters. I mean, knowing the path that he's kind of gone on to get to this point, you know, how proud are you to see him in that spot uh, again with everything he's gone through? Yeah, I think you know that whole group, and and certainly Muma, you know, has been, you know, he's taking ownership of it, and he's, you know, I think a lot of this, when you think about it, that you don't, you're always preparing, and when something comes. And you do have this this opportunity presented to you. Um, you appreciate those that have been working throughout it. You know, it wasn't like Muma just coasted and then all of a sudden, okay, Jack and Leo are leaving. Now I'm going to flip this switch and I'm going to. It's going to mean something to me. You know, I think I've loved the way that he's progressed throughout his time here and that whole the group of inside backers. You know, I think we got a group that we feel really good about and. Yeah, they've got to play, and they don't have a ton of experience. You know, Muma doesn't have a ton of experience at the line where he's played, but, you know, not in a, a full game. You know, same can be said about, you know, JT did a nice job coming in. And when he played and when he got opportunities, he did a nice job. Uh, Tate Grass has been – done a lot for this team, but he's in a good position. You know, Jake Cheney is a, a young man that we're excited about, and – you know, I've liked the, the growth and development of Brian Sanborn. You know, so I think that that whole group I appreciate, and, and certainly Muma, you, you love seeing it. You know, because it's uh, it's work over time, and now that there is an opportunity, I think he's done a good job of taking advantage of that. And it didn't just start this year. You know, it's been going for a while. Paul, you mentioned knowing some of the Illinois State coaches. I'm assuming one of them is Brock Spack. I know your paths crossed here late in his tenure at Purdue, but. Yep. What do you know? What What do you remember about him as just as a defensive coach, and maybe some of the battles you guys had when you were here and he was at Purdue? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, really good football coach, and um, you know, been impressed with what he's done for a long time there at Illinois State, and you know, he's got a group of guys on the staff that I think are really good coaches, and but Brock, I've always been impressed with, you know, him as a coach, and you know, I've had a chance to get to know him. A little bit outside of and a you know good person, and, and but I think you always really respected. When I mean, you went up against him, you knew it was going to be a good defense, and you knew you had to, uh, you know that part of it was going to be a challenge, right? And and it, you see the same thing now. I mean, it's uh, they play extremely hard. You know, they I think their players understand what they're trying to do. I know they've got a new offensive coordinator, and and so you, you try to prepare like any of these first games. You try to prepare the best you can. Um, each each stop he's had along the way, it's been a little bit different. Um, but I also feel like Brock will have a, a hand on kind of how we're going to play as a team as well. But um, you know, the one thing you know about games in general, and certainly the the early games, is that you, you know you're you're not going to know it all, and, and that's all right. You know, we've got to make sure our guys are prepared and they can play, and that we play good football and a good sound football. Coach, this is the first Monday of game week of the year. What is that like for you and your staff, and what do you tell maybe some of the younger guys who are doing this for the first time? 
Well, I think you're always uh, you're excited about it, and like I said earlier, you've got uh, there's a lot of work that goes into individuals and you know a team getting ready for the season, and now the season's upon us, and and, and yet I still think you. You know, the best way to go about it is you stay in the moment. And, you know, the best thing we can do is have a good Monday. And and um, I think it's off to a good start. And we got, we'll have meetings later on today. And you just got to have a good week of preparation. But we're excited to get the opportunity to play and, and kick this thing off. Paul, I know you mainly have to worry about the on-field product, but the South End Zone project, what does it do for you? What does it do for the players? What does it do for the program? Yeah, you know, I had the chance. Uh, we had a, a function there last week, and it's certainly impressive. And, uh, you know, it's a credit to really so many people for, for making that happen. And, uh, you know, for the department to have the vision and and the people to, to make it actually something you can do and, and then the, the 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 workers they they got it done. I mean, impressive. And I was able to see it outside my office, you know, every day. And you see them on weekends, and and, and what it went on to make it happen. And I think it's you know it adds significantly to the to the fan experience, you know. And I think there'll be ways that we can use it as a program um, that looking forward to. But it's uh, I think it's it's a really good. I mean, it's beautiful. Paul, you got a, a new a new safety tandem, and I guess I just want to get your thoughts on Hunter and John. You know uh, what you what you've seen from them in camp, and what do you like about that that combination? Yeah, I mean, uh, I like the, our group of safeties, and um, Jimmy likes them. You know, and and Torch has played a lot of football. You know, and certainly I know with Scott and Colin, he wasn't the starter, but played a lot of football and, and made big plays in in his times and opportunities. And Hunter. You know, loved how he, he kind of came on the scene last year, and you saw him keep getting better and better. And there's a guy that's you know always in control of his body and and is really talented and and doesn't play like a, a young guy back there. And then you know we're excited about Moy and and Preston Zachman's had a really good fall camp, and that's been fun to, you know for all of us to see with Preston. He's battled injuries, you know, and to f see him feeling good and and Moy. You know, it's fit right in, you know, got transfers. And, and so I uh, like that group a lot. And, and I think that, um, you know, they, again, Torch has the most experience, game experience, but but they feel like we got, you know, four really good safeties there. Paul, you spoke last week about the impact Rodas Johnson's going to have on, on the defense as a player, but how important is it to have a personality like his around the building and just on the team? Yeah, he's been great that way, and it's been it's been fun for me. I think a lot of us to, to see his uh, kind of maturity, you know, and as he ke continues to grow, and but he does. He's got a great personality about him, and and uh, and I've liked seeing him where I feel like it's he's genuinely in a good spot. He knows who he is, and he knows how he can contribute. And, you know, the D-line group as a whole, is a, it's a close group. And uh, I think they've all found ways to help each other. And so they, even personality-wise, they, they, they have a, seems to me like they kind of complement each other, even personality-wise. But, um, you know, for us to be good up front, you know, with that group, certainly Rodas is, is one of those guys that if, if he can truly continue to step up and, and and uh, keep developing and keep improving. He, you know, he's a guy that, that can impact it. Coach, are there any true freshmen that have already done enough to that you know are going to be used this season, whether it's on either side of the ball or even just special teams? Yeah, I mean, it'll be uh, interesting, and, and I think we think there's a few that can, you know, and want to see kind of how they continue to grow and, and develop, but but believe that there will be some uh, right now. And, you know, wouldn't put that on them, uh, put it out there. But it, I do think we got some guys that can help us. Kind of going off of that question, Paul, when it comes to Joe Brunner and looked at the depth chart, he's number two at left guard. Just even him not coming in during the spring, how has he grown into his role and, you know, asserted himself, you know, to be on that too deep right now, even with Tanner's injury? Yeah, no, he's uh, he's been working. And, uh, 
certainly like kind of what he's been doing. He's got a long ways to go, right? And like I said, every guy, I mean, you can take a look at, you know, Nick Herbig, you know, our best player, and, you know, Keanu, and every guy is working, and they got to work and, and keep going. And, and uh, you know, certainly, you know, feel good with the reps he's getting. feel like, you know, a lot of these guys, we feel like just the more reps they get, the better they're going to be. Paul, the makeup of the schedule looks so different than last year when you opened up with the Big Ten team and had three ranked teams, I think, in the first four games. Um, do you prefer this model, like where you can play the non-conference leading into the Big Ten? I know so much of scheduling is out of your hands these yeah. days, but is this the model you'd kind of want? You, you know, I think that uh, – I don't know if it's right or wrong, but you, you just kind of take a look at what you have and you embrace it, and and it's the best thing for you. And, and, and so – you know, there are, I do believe that there are no easy games. You know, there's, every game's an opportunity. And, and um, so I haven't put a lot of thought into that because, like you said, you really don't have a lot of say in it. So you just kind of take what it is and, and how do we make it best and, and right for our team. Uh, Jackson Aker said he got to learn a lot from John last year, just from the sidelines. Now, from what you've seen in camp, um, you know what have you seen from him? What do you expect to see in the uh, in the first string role? Yeah, I mean we're we're excited about Jackson, and I think that you, you see a guy that we think is a good football player and a guy that can help us. And um, you, you know, John did help, right? And you, and you see it, and he's Jackson's smart. He's going to watch film and he's going to learn from others and. And yet you got to go out and do it. And I've loved and appreciated the way that he's kind of taken those lessons that I learned on the field. And if it's something good, you see him being able to repeat it. And if it's something that he was off on, you, you see him kind of working at uh, improving it. And so I think, again, it starts with I think he's a good football player and a guy that we think can, can help this team. Paul? Well, um in the evolution of a young player, what do you see different today than you saw a year ago now in Braylon Allen in just the growth of a year? Yeah, there's so much with Bray. You know, I think that uh, one is, you know, he's he, he knows what he – this year he knew what he was preparing for, having gone through it, right? So there's uh, – you know, when you watch the, the film cut-ups and it's him on there and, and – you know, in the off season, how are you training and preparing your body? You know, he knows what he's preparing for. Um, you know, I think that we've got a good room there, and they they do a good job of pushing each other and kind of helping each other. And um, you, you just see a guy that's, or I see a guy that's, you know, obviously he's. I thought he's always had confidence in himself, but now I I feel like you see a guy that that has more confidence because of knowledge, probably of the position, you know, and, and again, a guy that wants to always keep learning, you know, and so some of the things that maybe he understood, now I think he understands it at a, a deeper level, you, you know, or that it was, I think I got that to where I know I've got that, and yet I think there's going to continue to be uh, some learning for him, right? There always is, but I've really been impressed with kind of his purposefulness in his preparation. I think that is driven by, one, I think he's got a clear vision of who he wants to be. He's got a clear understanding of who he is now, and he's not afraid to work. Right, time for two more for Coach. Yeah. Well, is there any update that you can provide on Isaac Ham's status and just kind of what, what's happened with that? Yeah, just talked to him the other day and, and uh, kind of working through that right now. So nothing, nothing yet, but I think uh, – in a, in a little bit, we'll we'll know a little bit more specific. Paul, kind of ping ponging off of Mike's question, uh, what do you see today that's different from Graham Mertz specifically? Got off to a little bit of a rough start, with maybe a few more interceptions than he wanted to throw at the start of last season before he really improved in the second half. But what do you see today that you didn't see a year ago? Well, I think you're seeing you know a guy that's gone through all that and and has found a way to keep coming out the other end, right? And and if you can do that and and learn from it, 
that's a good thing. And so I've loved the way that he's approached that. I think that uh, you're not trying to throw out hypotheticals when you, you know, there's a coaching point made. I think it, it, it resonates immediately with them, good and bad, right? And so, um, you know, I've, I've loved the way that he has approached camp, you know, and he understands, I think, too, you know, what good quarterbacking is. You know, I think he knows all of it. And now the, the challenge for all of us really is that how do we then – in the end, we're a team, and, and how, do, how does your offense complement your defense and your special teams complement that? How do we play off of each other and, you know, with each other? And, and, and so I think that's, that does change, you know, but I think that, you know, I've liked the way that he's approached things, and um, I think he's certainly very, very specific in, the, in some of those areas that he knows that he's got to get better at. And, and I think early in camp, certainly, you know, you, even spring ball f for sure, you're trying to feel out the new group. You know, now I think there's a there's more of a comfort, there's more of an understanding with the with the new receivers and and whatever may be new. But you know, that's what's awesome about the games. You, now you, you get to go out and you got to go you got to go do it then. That's for all of us. You know, what I mean, you take any position, any player. That's what's cool about the season is you you get to go play, and that's really. What all this work is for is so that you can play your best. And for quarterbacking, it's to give your team the best chance to win.